having been this name everyone knows about, that he becomes a, a modular synth player and, and re you know, really good for him. So uh, it, I think because you've got different working methods for each project, I think that's probably why they do all sound. But they've they've still got like the um, uh, the gong stuff. Always reminds me of the poppy stuff. The uh, you know those that run of singles you did with Knife World. So with the gong stuff. Oh, like the more, EPs and yeah, stuff. It reminds yeah, reminds me of that stuff. Um, the sort of the pop sort of side of your songwriting. Um, well, actually, the gong, the, the the band that doing gong in terms of how it feels to be in it is most like um, my first proper band, the Monsoon Bassoon, which mm. was two guitars, horns, and um, and uh, and drums. The drumming style, well, I wouldn't say drumming style is similar, but yeah, they, they, it sort of feels like when we do it, it sort of has that kind of power, and we mm. and we play, we have the same chemistry as as Monsoons did there. But I mean, yeah, I mean, my my stuff has a stink, you know. It's like it's like. So that's great with man. that's exactly no, no, what I love you want. it but, I mean, it's you're great gonna me you're gonna get because I'm yeah. not a session player no if you're gonna get me in your group you're gonna get my stink so if you that's like that's exactly what you want isn't it yeah I'll, I'll I'll bring it to I'll bring it to your thing you know but <laughs> well no I'm I'm very aware that I, I always try not to uh listen to your stuff lots because I know I'll start to do those you know the I'll find out I'll have a Lydian bit in my bloody song and it was saying like ah oh, that's too calm I can't but I sent it I remember I wrote something once I sent it to the guys and I was like we're not using this because it sounds too much like St. Carvers would write <laughs> but, like to hear that. But, but you know what I mean it was just like it was just this is too this is too it was an A drone and I was droning around the Lydian and I was like I can't use this because it's too you know and I always worry that you know it's, that's yours. That's not mine. I'm not having that. I don't even say I can't listen to um I can't listen to when I'm making a record, I can't listen to other people's music and particularly mm. can't listen to friends' music. If I'm making a record then I just have to just go with like the comfort food music, like, you know, Steely Dan or Black Sabbath or Iron Maiden or whatever, just something that I know so well, Hatfield and all just something that I know so well that it's not gonna it's not gonna kind of influence me because my friend, you know, you know Richard Lost Crowns. Yeah, yeah he's just he'd, he'd finished that album. And I was still working on my solo record, and I knew it was going to be good. I mean, I've known Richard since we were like I was seventeen. That's a dense friends. record, that is bloody yeah. Oh, it's, it, it, it's and I knew it was going to be good, and I and I knew he really wanted me to hear it because we've, uh, you know, the, the, you know, what it's like you have a handful of friends you play your stuff yeah. to first that, that, that kind of get your thing, and I knew he wanted me to hear it. I had to keep saying, Richard, Richard, please, I'm just going to finish this, and then once I finished it, I'm I'm in. Mm. And of course, once I heard, it, and I was so glad that I did wait because you you sort of don't want your you don't want what you're doing to be influenced well if you have an idea for a record i don't know about i don't know about how you um approach it with either fear of the dead or or with your i'd say maybe more with your solo stuff you kind of you how can i put it you you, you find the territory where that album yeah, 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 yeah. sometimes it'll take two songs or sometimes they'll be in the key song mm. you'll be you'll be writing and then you'll get this key song and you yeah, think ah yeah, this totally. defines the territory. This is this is the territory where this album is going yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is the yeah. colour this record's going to be. And you can't, you, you know, I can't explain why. But then I know that once you've got that key element, then you just want to light it correctly, you know. And then then you realise, then you go back to a song that I'd started. And, okay, I need to relight that now. I need to dial back this. And mm -hmm. so you want you want the whole thing to be a, a sort of story. And and so by listening to a, particularly listening to something like Richard, who I think is absolutely extraordinary composer mm, yeah, he is, yeah. Of, of incredible originality and um and and sort of detail and everything just hear that start going, and especially the way that lost album crown's album was produced because i thought it was such a i'm not exactly brave the sound of it is amazing and what richard did with that album he wanted to go full on sort of what he calls um uh, sort of like monochrome psychedelia and that's that kind of like real Piper at the Gates of Dawn mm. kind of white noise. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a psychedelia, but it's kind of quite black and white and sort of, you know, chiaroscura kind of thing. And the production was so exciting on that Lost Crowns album. And that's there's something you don't hear. I, I, I don't hear on too many kind of really complex albums. If you, if you think about things that are like maybe musically as complex, um, 
as as the as the lot of crown stuff a lot of the time because because you know the the, the information is so dense you're often just getting a fairly not exactly a dry production but just a fairly kind of flat production. yeah 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 <laughs> You know, the, but Richard, the, the production was so brave. Things were just going like the drum sound would be like really in, distorted and say, and so it was. It was the combination of like really amazing, almost like kind of broadcasty production, but with this really really dense, through composed, incredibly it, it sort of inventive music. Yeah, one for the one of the great albums of the the twenty first century. I think that Lost Crown tour. I'm so well, so proud that Richard did it as well. You know, well, he, he did quite well, didn't he? Did Rich uh, Six Music guys like it? It was album of the day on Six Music. Oh, uh, McConey was his album of the year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was album of the day on Six Music. Stuart McConey's album of the year. No, it was, it, it was good. I know it they got well played, it got like played during the daytime. It did, well, yeah. Like, it was great. Can you imagine? Can you imagine it? Drive music, time, like during the day. <laughs> I know, I love it. There's, but that's one of those little moments where, I mean, hopefully that sort of music will gradually seep into it. It's one of those things, that I think, like, you, like we said right at the start of this conversation, is if you do good stuff, hopefully it will eventually find an audience. And, you know, I think if you look at the so the last 50 years of rock music, I suppose that's sort of bared out that a lot of the time that does happen, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the other thing is... But, which is great with Lost Crowns. I don't know how frustrating it was for Richard because his previous band, Stars in Battle Dress, which I saw I, them I think insane, one yeah, of the greatest British band. They played at my wedding. I mean, just to honestly think one of the greatest British bands of all time. And mm. I, and I mean, I mean it. And I think there's two albums um, uh, in Droplet form and uh, Secrets and Signals. Just incredible. There, there are for the, for people who don't know, there are two pieces: James uh, on mm, piano remarkable. and vocals, and Richard on guitar and vocals. And every gig they do, there'll be fucking people talking to it. And I know it's like it's like the solo act thing. I saw and, them, and it was, yeah. and it's heartbreaking to watch because it, it's such beautifully measured and detailed, and just the the, the arrangements are so mm. kind of sparse but dense and just beautiful and 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 you read the frustration and i know why people had a few drinks and it's often mm. a rock gig and it's i could see the frustrating of having doing those gigs and people just weren't getting it and it was you know they would get you know i'd watch them for years and thought sometimes they were just like you know i'd, I'd, I'd think they're on, on a par with magma or something for they, in terms it, of when they got it right you know yeah people paid attention nuts. Um, you don't want to feel cross. You don't have to feel. And I've been that talking cunt at a gig, and I've <laughs> and I've, I've regretted it all my life. You know, too, once. Yeah, we've and done. um, we've all done. And it. I and I, you know, and uh, but but they're, and they're also incredibly nice people, aren't they? The Thousand Yeah, 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 yeah. They're lovely, and you know, it's just. Well, Richard how can was. You a, that I good? met him. Hmm? Richard was sixteen, and I was seventeen in Plymouth. I, I met yeah. him. I just couldn't, couldn't. But and the way I met him was um, a friend of mine said, "Oh, you got to meet." Gotta meet my mate Richard. He likes Voivod and Cardiacs. And I was just like, wait a minute, only one person in this damn goddamn <laughs> town likes Voivod and Cardiacs. That's me. I've got to meet this guy. And there there it was. There was Richard who liked Voivod and Cardiacs. So um and then you know, I, I just 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 couldn't believe how 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 sort of prodigiously gifted this this guy was mm. you know, when he was sixteen. He just you know in, and, and incredibly knowledgeable about music. And he, he turned me on to so much stuff. I mean, he turned me on to um, Zappa and Beefheart and the Dog Faced Hermans and uh, Bonzos and just loads and loads of stuff. He did me this compilation tape when we first knew each other. And it was, uh, and you know, it really, really was like a pivotal friendship. I, I think it's amazing, really, looking, looking back and thinking how fortunate i was to have met some of the people i did in plymouth you know of all, mm. of all places which is not known for it how did you discover cardiac then um again and this and actually this is all i put all this in my book book oh this mad book, you need to talk about this book um, just before we finish talk about the book yeah yeah, yeah no, we'll talk, no we do need to talk about the book do you need to talk about yeah. it i'm interested well, i've ordered it yeah. Oh god! Well, it's part memoir. It, well, it's it's a kind of crazy mess of a book, and I don't know. I'm so close to it, I don't know if it's any good or not. But I'm sure, um, I'm sure people will. I'm sure people will. And if people don't like it, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to be heartbroken because I'm not a writer. Mm. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a musician, and they've got offered to do it. And my feeling is, well, you know, fuck it. Yeah, why not? yeah, go for I mean, it. I mean, the same thing would have happened with DJing. I thought I'm not a DJ, but 
we yeah. got offered to DJ a, yeah, a festival yeah. called Block. And it's just like, well, you can either say yes. I mean, and then when we agreed to, D, when we agreed to DJ at this Block Festival, which is like an electronic festival, and we weren't going to play electronic music particularly, we ended up playing things like Super Nought, uh, uh and um, Peaches on Regalia and that sort of <laughs> stuff. But we just thought, well, we'll do it in our way, you know, Steve and I, and if, if we bomb... Well, all right. Then that's that story. God, oh, do you remember when we went to the block and we fucking put our Black Sabbath and emptied the place? Yeah, well, yeah, didn't yeah. Empty the place. People were really into it. And then it was like, okay, we'll, we've got something. But I could have could have easily said no. So with the book, mm. you know, I just sort of prepared to fail with it. But I've, I've been, I've tried to be as honest as I could. Um, so the book tells so the story of part the story of your discovery, you and Steve's discovery of different sorts of music, and then the last sort of ten yeah, years. Yeah, it's. Well, I, it's quite well. I'll tell you what it was. We can talk about the book. The book started off. We were doing the radio show, and a guy called Lee Brackstone, who was working at Faber and Faber, and he ran the music sort of mm. wing of Faber and Faber. And he said, "Look, we'd like to do. Um, we're interested in you two doing a book about music." So we went and had a couple of. Uh, like, took us out. They took us out for lunch, and we chatted. And they gave us lots of free stuff, which was good. That lots of music great. biographies, and. Um, we were just sort of hashing out how to do it. And then we, we came up with this idea that we would do um, 52 albums between us. And it was going to be 52 albums, like one for each week of the year, just a, a loose hot concept. Yeah. And, we were, and the book was going to be called uh, This Way In or The Way In. And the idea was it was going to be a way in to 52 different artists. And then I thought, oh, well, this will be great. I'll do, obviously, you do Cardiacs, Voivod, Henry Cow. We'll do Magma, the way in. And then we'll do, like, XDC. And we'll do, like, um, you know, your, your oh. tattoo, your stuff. And just had all this idea. This will be really, really fun. That, that, you know, do, like, um, Albert Marker, who people don't really know about, but is mm. kind of one of the greatest composers living, I think. Ba 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 ba. So we started this thing. And I wrote my chapter on, I wrote a chapter on Voivod's Nothing Face, of course. I thought that was an easy one to do. Thank you. Yeah, good one. Yeah, no. I, wrote a, I wrote a bit about XTC's Black Sea. Mm. I did about Frank Zappa getting into him. Mm. And, uh, and I started this. And then at this point, Lee, but it was, it was starting to be a drag. And also at this point, Steve and I had started doing the band. And then once we started doing Utopia Strong... I just didn't want to write a book. I just wanted to make weird music with this new mm. band. You know, it was really exciting. So we sort of went off the boil with it. And but Lee had um, Lee had left Faber and Faber and started up this new company. And we thought, oh good, well maybe we're off the hook now. Maybe we don't have to write this book. You know. Um, <laughs> but then, as it turned out, Lee got back in touch at the beginning of like last year, and said, "Well, I'm st I still want the books." We had a big we had a big Zoom, and Steve said, "Look, we've we've sort of." We've sort of we're not feeling this writing fifty two album. We're just not music reviewers. We're not. I, I can't. What I can really say is where I was when I bought it and how it made me feel. Um, and I, at the end of the day, I was just running out of superlatives. I'm not a music journalist, you know. And so, but what it transpired was well, what Lee really liked was the more where we were at when we were buying these records. So then, after a couple of you know an, an hour or so of talking. We decided it should be more of a memoir. And so we have this guy working with us, Ben Thompson, who was just, we were just like handing him all this like stuff. I started writing like a madman. And then he would chop it down. I think I wrote twice as much as was needed. But um, we kept the Voivod thing. So you get this mad Voivod chapter in the middle of it where it's just a chapter of me <laughs> going on about nothing face, you know. About the pirate pit, watch man. About, about time someone did, you know. Um... <laughs> I talked about some like interesting experiences, but mainly, mainly it's about my, from my perspective. It's mainly about so it's like one chapter of Steve, one chapter of me, one chapter of Steve, mm. one chapter of me. And from my perspective, it's mainly about like, being at school, getting to Iron Maiden, forming my first band at school, leaving school, doing my first like metal band. There's loads about my. It's mainly about my old uh, metal band, Die Laughing, cool. and then it's about moving to London with Monsoons and then joining Cardix. But, while I was writing the book, um, Tim died, and it ended up being I ended up writing this. It's almost like love letter to Tim, I suppose. Uh, just you know, he just died, and I ended up just and, and I think I must have written about twelve thousand words, and I think the the whole book is only like ten thousand words, 
and that's between me. So I must have written about 12,000 words. And Ben got back and said, look, this is great, but, you know, this is a book about you and Tim. And you're writing a book about you and Steve. And, so, and it's like, yeah, fair play. But he hacked, I, I just thought, well, I'm, I'll leave it in the lap of the gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hacked through, he hacked through all kind of like loads of my stuff and, and brought, it ended up really being about like kind of my formative years. And then once I got that back, then I started working on it and trying to make it better, trying to make it, until the deadline came. And I've had so many times since we've handed it in where I've been in the shower and gone, oh, I could have, that was a much better point I could have made or, oh, I missed this story out, but so be it, you know. So it kind of, my story goes up to where me and Steve meet and then Steve sort of picks up the story. And for Steve, it's, a, I suppose, much more exciting because for me, like the Die Laughing stuff's kind of fun because it's my first band and you've mm. got that real thing about like, you know, it's best you know, time, it splits best, up. And yeah. so you start off with the best intentions, but you grow, you kind of grow apart. And what, you know, what I wanted to do and what Dan in the band wanted to do became much more kind of stuff I've ended up doing that you that mm. people know me for. Uh, and what the maybe the rest of the band wanted to do was just be like more metal. So it's like my kind of growing away from metal, really. And it, it's a bit about that. Not growing away from it, because I, I love it, you know. But um, but yeah, it was. So, a, so there, yeah, been, I understand. It's from Steve's perspective, it's a lot more exciting. This like his, you know, having been this name, everyone knows about that. He becomes a, a modular synth player and, and re, you know, really good for him. It's really cool, though, isn't and, it? It's really it's great, you know. So yeah. uh, hopefully, it's a good tale. I don't know. I'm looking forward to reading it. I really am. It's, um, I don't know. It's, uh, I just think it's, uh, are you doing a and a as well, Carlos? Do you want to plug your Q&A? Q&A Rough Trade, yeah. And I think we're going to be doing one at Cafe Otto as well, which as a live event kind of thing. I mean, what, what would have been the ideal thing would be to, to have gone round and sort of done signings mm. or Q&A in bookshops during the afternoon and then in wherever the town was to play to play to DJ that evening oh, in a pub be or something. Because cool, yeah. what, what I really want to do is, although when we when we we play like mad, we we play our strange music as DJs live, and we get people kind of boogieing. But I'd really like to do uh, an evening more like the radio show where we can actually play just like some real fucked up head music mm. rather than having to. We we you know it has to kind of keep people you know the pressure to keep people dancing and it's great because you, there's always. The really fun thing is you'll find like a track by Typographica, who who are like this kind of Zappa esque Japanese group. But there's like this one track where it's, it's kind of got a you, you, the one is there, even though all this like, <laughs> stuff is going around it. There's a one, so then we put that in the DJ set, and it's really funny to see people dancing to because you can hear where the one is, but what's going on around it is so kind of <laughs> exciting, you know. But it would be fun to. It would be nice to. Um, I mean, I mean, the other thing is hopefully one thing that happened with the book is people realise that Steve isn't a techno DJ because there's a lot of people sort of think, oh yeah, Steve Davies, he's become a techno DJ now, and then people would would, would book us expecting techno, and then you know we'd go on and start <laughs> the Magna B sides, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Ter- Terry Riley or something. <laughs> you know, like... Brilliant. I mean, I just think it's so cool. I think. Um... <laughs> What what an amazing I mean, adventure, though. Just for, it like, has been. I mean, I, I worry that I, I worry that I sound like a wanker, but I mean, it's again, no, it's, man, it's, it's really it's, cool. It's lovely. I mean, in the book, it, I just, I, do I sound like a wanker? I mean, there's, oh, there's times really as I was writing it, I was thinking, especially the stuff to do with my old band. I was as I was writing, I was because I think I, you know, I probably come off worse than this, but I, there was times I was writing it and I was looking back and going. I was really a wanker back then, wasn't I? <laughs> you know, but, but, well, to, I mean, to be I fair, know. I mean, everyone, everyone in their own, you know, I, I had me thrash band, and I'm sure I was a equally a Wally. And what was your thrash band Joe, called? What's that? What was your thrash band called? The Mighty Lair. Lair, we were called. We were rubbish. Did they have an unreadable logo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, basically, we were East Northamptonshire tribute to. Um, Celtic Frost and Voivod, which was very hard oh, to book. Same, same with Slash Plymouth. <laughs> very hard to book in that area at the time. Yeah. There wasn't, I mean, I remember playing sort of village, you know, village pubs and stuff, and they'd be like, you know, dire straits. Then we'd come on with like, you know, everything was flat fives and just because we were so into Voivod and Celtic Frost, we didn't really listen to, you know, an yeah, Iron yeah, Maiden. Yeah, yeah. Started off ripping off Iron Maiden and then we, all got, we got nothing faced into the pandemonium and there was no going back. Just <laughs> that was the because uh... we're the we the, the we, we were we were both we both experienced that thing yeah same with me as it started off um 
you know, I liked other stuff at school. Um, I was never just, I was, you know, never just a metal. I was like music, mm. but I wanted to play sort of metal. Mm. And I wanted to play metal with like, you know, two guitars. And so it started off very maiden. But, you know, uh, Cardiacs and, Vo and, and Voivod came to ruin everything. Um, and Cardiacs was sort of beyond me. Um, in terms of just hearing and, and being able to arrange that for him. but Voivod wasn't because Voivod was guitar, bass, and drums. Yeah, it was. And it I was here. I could. I could just, hear yeah. more how they were doing it. I could hear. So Voivod became a, a, a really big uh, was was a really big inspiration, and in terms of just those um, really sort of angular, mm. angular riffs and everything. I mean, I, I love. I, I mean, I've, I I love that band. I re, I really do. Yeah. For me, it was there. Are, there are there are a few bands where you feel. That's my band, you know that, and and Voivod was my band, you know. It was it was the thing of having it was the bands I love, but they never felt like my band. But Voivod just and still, they kind of feel like my band. They they, they had they had such an impact on me. I think it was four know. musicians who had very distinctive personalities. You know, they all, they all were, were quite odd players. You know, they all you had a sort of drummer who was sort of like a post punk, lots of lots of toms drummer, distorted bass player. Proggy inversions guitarist and a unique vocalist, and it just yeah yeah. There was lots of for me it was it's that bizarre. run from um that run from uh Killing Technology through to Angel Rat I think is almost unparalleled in rock for for me and it's it's really really um it was so exciting because I I came in on properly I, I'd heard them before but they weren't for me I wrote about this in the book actually about mm. hearing Raw at the time it came out and just being like. But I, I, when I heard, um, I, I bought, um, in 1988, I bought Dimension Hatros. And I, I just, I'd only, like, four, two or three months earlier, got into Cardiacs. And then I heard this, so I'd already had the ears. By then I had the ears yeah. to hear Voivod from Card, you know, from yeah. Cardiacs. And, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it was just like, it was like they both came to my life at the right, at the right time. And to have you know to be for then to be current so i didn't have to go back to something so exciting waiting for nothing mm. place. yeah then, uh, when nothing place came out oh it was, it, it was but do, did you remember do you remember were you into them by that point you were into no i was into them like uh 89 there was a uh i think it was 88 or 89 there was a it must have been 14 15 there was a um noise record. a little bit older yeah I'm a bit older noise records compilation with um it was, it was a picture disc i only bought it because of the picture disc i wasn't really interested in you know just thrash metal it was like a quid or something and there was a picture disc and it had um mesmerized by celtic frost on there and it had like halloween oh mesmerized i love that stuff brilliant mm -hmm. uh, um and um cockroaches by voivod which is i oh <laughs> that, that's <laughs> which, <well -fetched. laughs> Too scared to scream with cockroaches. Oh, what a what a! In, I think it's too scared to scream. Is the is their most improbable song? You like listen to it, and you just sort of think, well, how did you get to this conclusion? Even even by Voivod standards, it's just it's so improbable that one. Um, when Angel yeah. when Angel Rat came out, it was just like I, I it, that was the, you know, I remember buying that when that came out. We was oh, it's not distorted and it's. But I loved it. I got really into it. I, got, I just yeah. love that record. It was just I was I tell you my Angel Rat story. It's not a story, but they, they were do you remember there used to be a um there used to be a, a metal magazine called Raw. Yeah, Rock yeah. Action I see. Worldwide, Rock Action Worldwide. And they they had a feature, they just had a half page feature in the in the news section about Voivod's next album. Mm. And this is before the sort of Blackie had left. Mm. And there was like a, a little interview away from the studio and he was talking about these new titles on what the album that would become Rain Angel. But at that time it might have been called Phobos. The album was going to be called Phobos. Oh, which and he is said that there's gonna be there's going to be songs. There's going to be a song on it called "Totem for a Mohawk." <laughs> okay, it sounds good. And then, and one song called "I'm About to Go AWOL." <laughs> so my fevered, you know, um, what what was it like? Eighty nine. I was eighty. My eighty year old mind, you yeah. know, was I'm about to go AWOL. Phobos. Totem for a Mohawk. And there was one. I can't remember which, but there was one where it was like the I'll be. I'll be playing accordion on this one, says drummer away. And so we were really excited, <laughs> me and my brother, about like, oh, God. Mm. And then we heard it's going to be called Angel Rat. It was produced by, you know, it was produced by Terry Brown. I thought, oh, okay, yeah. this would be interesting. 
And then we heard a, a Blackie had left. And we got it home. I thought the cover was great and stuff. Mm. And we got it home. And um, I, I suppose I was expecting nothing face two. It's a shock. And it was I, a was, shock, I was initially disappointed. Me too, yeah. And then it was, I, I think it was like the second or third listen and it, it, it clicked, you know. And yeah. I, I, I think it's, I, I just think it's unbelievable. I mean, just, it, was, it was the chorus for, for Clouds in My House was when I realised, yeah, this is fucking, this isn't just a, this is Voivod doing pop. And it's, Voivod doing pop is brilliant, you know. But so, no, no one else ever did it. No one else had that run of th from dissonant thrash to absolute genius jangle pop but no, no, <laughs> no. It's like an, it's, i love it it's really it's a really good album but i think the um i think the new one the wake or the, the it's last great, one, yeah it's is, is as good as anything of that of those four i think it's that for me it's the one i've been i was most excited about synth angel rap i was really really got into playing that album i uh, quite like the outer limits the outer limits at its moments but um it's, it definitely has its moments, but I think it it didn't hold together with the excitement. No, I know. It was of, more of the other, dog, wasn't it? the others. It, it's got some really good bits on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of, it did. I don't know. It, it sounded just slightly tired. Uh, it just didn't have that kind of funny kinetic energy that the others. Uh, it, it was, I, I, yeah. I, I, I still listen to it. You know, enjoy it. I haven't listened to it for a while, but I loved it when it first came out. Um, but it hasn't quite stayed with me the way the other ones have. But. Um, yeah, when we saw them, that was amazing, wasn't it? You know, the um, was that the, the, um, the that underworld. Was the underworld, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I, 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 you know, I think they're just, you know, I think you know, and I think Chewy, you know, Daniel is doing such He's a good job. I mean, it's it's amazing. It's you know, He's brilliant. I, I, I uh, we had a talk because obviously we we uh, in a slightly different way, but I, you know, I had to replace David Allen, and he had to re 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 replace Piggy. And um, but I think he's doing, you know, and and I love that he's his solos. He's bringing this whole Holdsworth influence mm. solos, but totally writes in the in the in the Voivod style, but without kind of sounding kind of corny or no, like repetitive. And sometimes there'll be like nods to an old Voivod song, but I th I just don't think anyone could have done it better than he has. He's and of course that was it, for him. It was his band. He grew up with it. You know, he mm. he gets it. He was sort of born to be in Voivod. I think just um, uh, just it's remarkable they've. I mean that that gig. Was, I mean, I just couldn't believe there was, there was probably how many people were there—about 150 people. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was just at the front. I know. Yeah, it was joyous. <laughs> Me, know, you, I'm and Chris always, McGarrow, I'm, I'm, Yeah. I'm always down. The, I mean, still gigs. I just want to get down. Well, whatever, um, whatever I go and see, I want to be down the front. I mean, you want to be, you want to be in the sort of. You, you don't want to be any further back than the amps from the front of the stage. Where, wherever the amps are, you don't want to be any further back than there because because my it's the magic circle. That's where the magic happens. That's when you're really, you're, you're part of the show. I mean, it's, it's great to see, but, but you know, if it's something I really love, if it's like it's one of those bands where, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever I can to get down the front still, just like when I was like 15 or whatever. Did you ever see Foy Fod with Piggy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw them with Piggy, but with um, in the Eric Forrest days at the, as the at the marquee. How was it? Um, but you know, it, it just kind of wasn't for me. No, I, mean, I was. I, didn't get I was. Yeah, I was somewhere. I was somewhere else, maybe at the point. But I didn't begrudge them it at all because I think um, because I'm not one of those sort of fans. I'm not one of those sort of people who puts everything into. I know how easy it is for a band to j just different influence, or, or sometimes yeah, it's run its course, and sometimes. Look, if, you know, Voivod got to a level. Why would you want to then split it up and start something else? I mean, maybe the, the Eric Forrest thing, but it was still Voivod. I mean, it's, it's Piggy in a, a way. I mean, you know, there's some good songs that they made in that period. But I saw them live, and it just kind of wasn't for me. And I actually left before the end of the gig, and I felt a bit like, well, but I didn't then turn against Voivod. You know, to, I mean, it's really strange when you see, um, and this is really something you see on the internet. Or Toxic you would see gig, certainly in the, in the in the prog or the classic rock mm. or whatever world, um, you will you people still like grown ups like people older than us, still like getting in a shitty mood about like their band going commercial or that. It's like and it's over. So what? You know, music doesn't stop just because this one particular disparate group of five people that for that had the right drugs and managed to get on for two years created some amazing music and then stopped creating some amazing music. <laughs> Just be thankful we had it. Because guess what? 
there's another band, there's another gr- gr- group of five people or four people somewhere else who have also got amazing drugs that are making new brilliant music, you know. So yeah, yeah. don't worry about those ones. They made those records, you know. They made Close to the Edge. Don't worry about them now. You know, now go over here because there's other good shit going on, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's so the... I, don't, I don't hold any, um, I don't have a, I, I'm not like a football team with... The entitled with, with, fan. Huh? The entitled fan. No, I'm not like a fan. No, I, I not just me, no. like music. And if a band, if a band sort of goes rubbish, and to be honest, at my age, I've, I've experienced so many bands that I loved, kind of not going rubbish, but kind of maybe for a period they found a mojo that really kind of got the barb in me. Because you know, so much stuff, good stuff, goes past you. Mm. Occasionally, something will—I don't know what it is—it'll just have that barb, and you can't let it go. And you know. Um, I can't remember where I was going with this, but you know, it's just like yeah, is you, there, can't it, 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 you just can't hold it again. The torch is passed, isn't it? The torch is passed by you know, these different bands have that amazing period of inspiration for a couple of years, and then and some bands like Voivod have four albums of it. So yeah, they well, see a massive about, run, I mean, you know. It's you, you know, um, and and then also like tr- you know, almost like holding out, holding out for that band to give you the same feeling that you got when you were, and you know, I'm I'm the same. I mean, every. Every time Iron Maiden makes a new record, I just think, oh, well, God, what, what if? What, what if it gives me that same buzz that, like, Peace of Mind did? But, but uh, it won't, but, because the, the other thing is I'm not that age anymore. You're, you're, and you're, you're, your head's in a different space. However, I do remember when that Wicker Man single came up, and I was, out, and I was bloody excited when that came out. Yeah, well, when they, when they, um, I mean, I still, I always go and see them. <laughs> no, I, know, me too, yeah, yeah, I always go and see Maiden. I've, I've seen, apart from, like, maybe Magma, um and and cardiacs cardiacs before i joined because i used mm. to always go to, i've probably seen maiden like more than no, more probably. than any other band i always go to see them. I, mean, I, I love to i love to see him because I, I had so much invested in them as a kid and mm. i just think well i'm not expecting another i'm not expecting another power slave but it's still it's still maiden they're still playing and i've got so much investment i might i might as well go into him because i love it you know and so, they're still good line aren't they, they are still you know i mean it's great you know I think, you know, the run up to, I mean, what, what was your last Maiden album you loved? Se- Seventh Sun, the last one for you? Or so- I really, really loved Seventh Sun. Um, yeah, me too, I, yeah. I got on board with, um, but even the, even Seventh Sun, I've I've grown to love it. I, I liked it at the time, but that came that came the same year as like, Cardiacs turned up mm. and, and Voivod. And then once that happened, I was, you know, the, everything yeah, no. was out the window really for a while. But my daughter is a, it has got really, really into Maiden. It's like her favourite band. Oh, but just, but just um, the first album through to Seventh Son. Mm. She's, she's really, really into Seventh Son. And now hearing some, now that I've kind of, I'm, you know, now that Maiden isn't vying for my attention, I can sort of hear Seventh Son for the record that it is. I say, like, oh, this is a great it's album. A yeah, brilliant. I love it. The the pop songwriting on Seventh Son is insane though, because there's stuff like on the clairvoyant and stuff. There's like there's like a bridge hook. And then there's a chorus hook, and then the solo. Every, you can sing the solo, and it's and it, every well, part. The solo, that's the oh. of them, yeah. Yeah, the lo- the lonely list, the long distance runner is my favourite Iron Maiden lead break. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, well, that, that's yeah, one that. of my favourite tunes. Yeah, no, that, well, yeah, no, one of my favourite tunes actually. That one, oh, um, I, I think top five, a really overlooked. I'd mm. love to hear him do that one live. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I love that. I, mean, I love, um, I love uh, Somewhere in Time. It's, it's like the Adrian Smith album. It's really, really nice. Yeah. I, I just uh, that's that. That was the magical time, right? I think we should probably stop now, shouldn't we? I mean, really? Uh... I thought we were just getting started. What time is it? <laughs> so, cool. God, we've been at it for an hour and a half. <laughs> mm. I always end up going about Voivod, but you know. Oh, it's great. I mean, I was going. Voivod, about... I talk about really, you know, so. I don't know why. It's because you know what? It's because I'm subliminally pushing the book, which I talk about those guys a lot. Because just because of the sort of the, the impact it had on me. But um, I think I think it's really cool yeah. that um, you know if you can, you do have the opportunity to in any way, you know, contribute to spreading the word of Voivod. It's pretty important work, isn't it? They're doing they're doing a good job of it themselves now. I mean, they're, yeah. you know, they've still they seem to do you know seem to do well. I People think are it, getting it. You know, they were in they were in the wire recently. There was a feature on them. Really? So you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were, good. you know, when we when I, when I was a kid and when we were kids, he was there was no chance you'd ever see them live. There was no there was that, that was never going to happen. They didn't. I think they ever toured. Had they not played like one? Had they not done something? Was there not a one-off gig? Kind of noise record called something like 
eight not eight days of hell. There was Create, there might have we, we been creator. a noise gig where I think Creator Creator and Voiv just like a one off in London or something. But it, it was it was very like, unlikely. I mean, I've seen them every time they've come to London, you know, and it's been last two times I've had I've, I've been on I mean touring with Gong, mm. so I couldn't I, I couldn't go. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always try and see him whenever you know whenever I can. But it's um, Ooh, it's, it's brilliant. It, it's weird though because like XTC I, I didn't get until last year. Like it just I had time to go realize, through. The... Sorry. I didn't realize you were uh, you had you had come to them so late. No, only, only in the last year. I was like cardiac, so I didn't find out about it until I met you. You know what I mean? That was Why? okay about eleven years ago. Well, I when... sure people know about it then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? And it's I think people will discover bands like Voivod, Cardiacs, XCC. I think you know Jellyfish or whatever these bands that are, you know there's some really Mad Vision Orchestra stuff. People will continue to you know find that music, won't they? I keep hearing about. I've never had my um. I, people always say, "Oh, you got to get into Jellyfish," but I've not had. What's the What's the way in? Um, the well, XTC Skylarking, really. I mean, it's, that's the that's the oh, that's, that's the Jellyfish vibe. It's, it's very you know, and then but both the Belly Button is fantastic. I mean, just in belly terms button. of pure Belly Button, yeah, pure. I mean, you like the poses and stuff, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, Frosting so, on the beat. Frosting on the beat, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a bit, it's a bit like Frosting on the beat. It's got that kind of a um, little bit of indie rock in there, but it's, it's quite um, harmonically, you know, quite adventurous. Really, yeah, I love the writing on it. It's just mm. like that real. Well, it's not that power pop thing. It's like you mm. know, big star, cheap trick. I, I love that. You know, that kind of um, that just th that sort of pop. Yeah, that that. But you, you've pop definitely got that in your songs, haven't you? There's an element of well, power pop. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah, 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 maybe. Lydian power pops the future. Lydian power pop. I can't write the choruses though. I mean, the, the, those you know, the, the proper bands can. I think Claire yeah, no, Fortnite's got a great chorus. Oh, I could, I could write a that's chorus. Great I just chorus. Don't think, I don't think I could, I've never written a chorus like um, what flavor of the month or something, oh, which is just, so, just, so, so, just it's so hard. Totally clapped. It's like oh, it's know, just, oh, if only I'd written that one, you know. It's so, it's so hard to do that. Just well, uh, have you ever listened to? Do you like much Mad Vision Orchestra stuff and things like that? Was there um, jazz rock a yes, thing for I you? Like Mad Vision, yeah, I like. I came in on Birds of Fire. Mm. I've got Inner Mounting Flame. Then we got the little. Um, I say, you know, I've got the box. The box set. Yeah, with the I really five like classic. Might and One Apocalypse. I like the last one with um, Emerald. Uh, Visions of the Emerald Beyond. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'd say they're a group I like. But then I never had the the Barb never you know I've yeah, got their yeah, records yeah. I listened to I like but the Barb never got me I know they did with you I was the Barb obsessed, never yeah. got me in the way that because you know when the Barb gets you then it's, it's like all you can think about is that band and all you want to listen to mm. is that band yeah yeah and yeah. you know I've had it but sometimes you, know, you, you wouldn't be expecting to have it with when I was younger sort of like despite being into sort of quite relatively speaking more sort of awkward stuff I remember just the, when I, when I when I, and this is going back to being a teenager when I heard the Ramones. It was like the barb went right in. It was like, oh god, I'm just totally into the room, you know. I, I couldn't stop thinking about them. But then the other bands will come along who are maybe like, you know, I don't know, like television. I like, I like television. I like Marky Moon. Mm. But I never had that thing where yeah, I'm just yeah, thinking, I thinking about Marky Moon all day long, and you know, and wanting to read everything about it and all that. You know, I like it. It's like sort of I, like I know that. I know. I think Guardian readers, you know, XTC. The last year has been my obsessive band. It's yeah, yeah, they they'll do that. Yeah, they do that. XTC because there's a lot. Uh, Steely Dan, Steely Dan did it as well. A similar sort of different harmonically, but I've the same amount Steely. of like attention to detail. Oh, I like okay. Steely Dan, but I'm not an I'm not. I wouldn't say I was a Steely Dan. I, I like them. I like everything I've heard by them. I think it's they sound I, I amazing. The, the harmonies are really clever. The playing's incredible. But they don't really. I can't. You know what I mean? There's no. It took me. It took me a while because a few people had said. I'd, uh, um, there was actually a guy called Ben Ben Hervey from a group called Camp Blackfoot, and he kept saying, "You got to get into. You got to get into Steely Dan. This is in mm. the '90s." And he did me a mini disc where he put um, the Contortions uh, by, and then Steely Dan Royal Scam afterwards. Mm. And I love the Contortion stuff. This is right right on my street. But the, every time I got to Steely Dan, I was just like, oh, "This is like the worst music there is." I think. <laughs> And he was going, Are you into Steely Dan yet? You know, have you got it? I was like, No, I'm not I'm not hearing it. What am I supposed to be hearing? It's mm. horrible. Like he said, No, 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 you're not you're not 
and I was going up to a friend's wedding in Glasgow and I had this mini display with me and I think I just had it on and I was just and it came mm. onto the CD and I just let it play and it the coin dropped I must have heard it enough times that the melodies had got under my skin and I heard it and then and the Royal Scam is a really good one I'll try it's a way in Royal Scam is great yeah what was that then once I remember a while, but you were telling me about a Madness album that's really good as well. Oh, well, a few of them. A few of Madness albums are really good, but Rise and Fall and um, Keep Moving. Mm. Absolutely, I, I think, two sensational albums. A, a bit of, I mean, if you like if you like sort of XDC and Cardiacs and, and The Kinks, mm. it's that kind of... it's mm. but, but That kind of thing, but really, really good arrangements. If you like... If you like what the way Gentle Giant arrange their music, it's done in it's the same approach, but done less sort of uh, I don't know if the word ostentatious, less kind of obviously, you, you know, yeah, because the, the tunes are you kind of behind the tunes when you actually listen to what what how the mm. arrangement's working between the seven of them, and then often the strings as well. And of course, that guy David Bedford did the strings, who you know, who's a composer and is an avant garde. Oh, yeah, composer. yeah, I know, like, yeah. brilliant. And he'd also done, he'd done, um, well, he d did things like Mike Oldfield. Uh, yeah, did, but his, his arrangements are, are like fucking amazing. On top of these already brilliant Madness kind of arrangements, they really knew that's, a, I mean, that, if anything, Madness was like a big inf in, inspiration on Knife World because they, they really know, if you listen to how they do it, they really know how to arrange as a band. And the guitar will often, like enough of the guitar will just be doing these lines. It won't necessarily be playing mm. the chords, but between what all the, and the bass lines are just brilliant. I mean, it's really, really ex exciting arrangements on those madness. But, but yeah, particularly rise and fall and keep moving. Uh, I'll have to, I, I, I've got to find some, so I'm, I can't stop listening to XDC at the moment. I need to listen well, to keep, yeah. keep it. Keep it that way. Well, especially <laughs> if you don't know, if you haven't gone, if you, so you're going backwards. I'm going backwards, got to, yeah. Um, what, so where, how far back? Where are you at? At the moment, I, I've listened to. I know wrap this up, but just... no, I, I, no, I'm enjoying talking to you. I haven't spoken to you for a year, not properly. So well, exactly, yeah, yeah. Obviously, for the um, but um, uh, I'm working. I, I I came in Skylark and I worked all the way forward. So and I loved everything. I love that evolution. Yeah. I love the orchestral stuff at the end. Oh, love, it's lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And really inspired. Really like you can hear that there's somebody, you know, when people do elaborate arrangements and stuff, sometimes it sounds like they're just showing off or or when they do a funny chord sequence, it's just like, oh yeah, look, I'm bringing this in and look at this is really clever. But there's none of that. That's what the that's the thing of good composition. It's like it's not showing off your technique. It's, it's inspiration that you've 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 sort of taken in all these influences, and then something's you coming know, out, you know, the side. You know, you know, Partridge is a huge Mahavishnu fan. That was his. That was his kind of like um, uh, Inner Mountain Frame was like one of his real breakthrough albums. So what's really interesting about Partridge, as well as his big clear love for the Beatles and mm. you know the sort of Kinks and whatever, he's coming from a real beef heart trout mask replica. Can he's really into mm. Resonance, um, uh, like Inner Mountain Flame. This is his kind of thing as well. So you, especially on the early stuff, you hear it, it's, it's a lot more sort of dissonant. But there's still little creep. You can still hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, he although he's got such a good pop here, but you can still hear that funny, the funny rubs in there, and the funny. I mean, and you'll get. I, I think on each every album they've done, there's like one song which is as good as anything they've done. I think mm. I could pick like one song of every album that it's as good as anything they've done. And to to have that to to be able to just you know to still go through and like at least one where I go well that could have been off on oh, that the very last album Wasp Star yeah yeah it's amazing one called the, the Wheel and the Maypole the last track it's like this could have been this could have been on English Settlement and it would have been the best song on English Settlement yeah you know, it's, it's really brilliant it's a, it's a it's a truly stunning I mean I, I just I just worry that I'm you know when you discover something you're really excited about it. And you just spend ages listening to the same records over and over. You know, I've, I've, yeah, I've... <laughs> I still listen to XDC all the time. And and I tell you what, that that they were a they were really prolific. It's all pretty, you know, it's pretty much all good. Yeah, so yeah. they've got all there's loads of B sides, and of course, where the B sides were, Partridge could get more more. Ex Sometimes you get some of these like funny like sort of bleak synth numbers there's one called the somnambulist which is lovely you know but very would never be normally be on an album yeah but then you get the th the fuzzy warbles cds mm. which is like all his demos and 
there, there's there's like demos for XDC songs which we we know, which I'm less interested in. But then there's all these bad demos which didn't get to be make it to be XDC songs, and you listen to them and you go, I could make I could make that just like two incredible xdc albums out of just the the, the 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 stuff you got on the on the on these over these eight discs i mean it's really really good really it's good in, it's just insane and though so you're going for such a treat and, and you, you really really keep on giving them it's one of those when you hear about them and then finally you pull the trigger and, and you re, when, once you hear it and you're in for you are in for such a treat but i i think going back to even that that first album is just fan, you know white music it's magnificent it's i, I really, listened to the really first good. two and they didn't connect with me uh, like the later stuff, um, but you, you oh, can hear there's a go to's got some brilliant. There's battery brides and red mm. and the rhythm. I mean, you know, it's it's really exciting. So it's quite Eno-ish, some of it. But there's that there's that thing of you know when people write and they it's weird. There's there's two ways. There's people write and it sounds like they're inspired all the time. Yeah. And there's this, you know when, you know when people compose melodically, and there's a line through the whole song where it works. Yeah. And then there's people who compose pop songs and you can hear, you can see the scaffolding. You can see how it all. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And with them, you can't see the scaffolding. It's like. Uh, uh, I like to see the scaffolding. There, there, there's um, there's a thing I always say about, and this is in terms of making sort of complex music, is it, or, or relatively, I mean, by rock. In, in yeah, by rock. Contextually, right. You know, is that you? You never, you never want to show the graph paper, and sometimes you'll be doing it. It's like you're showing the guy. You want everything to sound like it's in four four. Yeah, Even yeah, yeah. It's in thirteen eight. You want it to sound like it's in four four. You want it to bounce, and you never want to sound like because because you know. And thank, I, I don't think I'd do it anymore. I, but you know, I've been in pit bands with people that do that would be like, oh yeah, we should do this. We you know that riff's really great, but now we should put it in this minor key and reverse it because then it's like. We're showing them the graph paper. It doesn't mm. need to do that. It's I good agree. just being that riff. And then we'll go somewhere else. We don't need to go, look, and, and now look what we can do with it. And now look if we subdivide this and put it into the... And if you can do it seamlessly, then you get something like Cardiacs, where I've never, I never broke down what Cardiacs mm. is doing because it's, it's not important to me what it's doing. I mean, that's what, a very... What it's doing is taking you on a, a, yeah. a, a, an amazing trip, you know. It's a very you, similar You never thing. see the graph paper in Cardiacs. Very similar. With you, Cardiacs, you, you, you never the, see the graph paper. Yeah, you can see the, you know, there's a line of composition going through, like the, the Cardiacs stuff as well. There's a line going through that where you can see, you know, there's it's one long composition. There's not bits and it's not... That's hard stuff to do, man. That's just... That's the... You know, that's the Andy Partridge, Tim Smith, that's that level, isn't it? There's a, well, I mean, a different the, world, isn't it? Well, the thing with Cardiacs, I think, is that because they do, because an aspect of the music is this sort of, which, which I suppose to most people is maybe what puts them off, but then it's also what probably hooks some people in, yeah. is that there's this that, that kind of really composed, stop starty sort of, you know, aspect of it. But that's not why it's really good, I don't think. I no. mean, it, it, the fact is that Tim is such a good writer. Exactly. That you can put yeah. all that behind it, and it makes it exciting. But the, the, the harmony and the melody are so mm. exciting. You know, I think I think the, the simpler, not the simpler, but the, the less sort of like obtuse stuff like Sea Nymphs, mm. it's, it's that anything else he's done is just as brilliant. It just happened to be, because his compositional style was so strong, he can do all that kind of stuff. But it, you'll hear a lot of these sort of, influenced by cardiac bands and all they do yeah they never sound do like all the, like the that stuff but it's like well you haven't got the tunes so it, it just kind of sounds it, it, that's, that's the whole point it doesn't yeah. work unless you've got the tunes totally agree. you haven't got the tunes it just sounds like it just sounds like you're saying look at us aren't we aren't we tight aren't we rehearsed and it's you know yeah no i totally and that's agree the, that's the one of the things that i hear sometimes people say oh you've got to check out you really like it it sounds like cardiacs it's like, it doesn't sound like cardiacs because i don't hear a tune i just hear it's, lots of i i hear i see the graph paper. i can see the workings out but there's no the beautiful out. psychedelia there is there's no it's a different world isn't yeah it? yeah yeah you know and there's you know it's, it's that thing of trying to give people psychedelic feeling without drugs is trying to give you that that feeling that you that's know what, that's what you, you're, you're trying to provide the transcendent you know transcendent experience kind of thing and i don't really care I mean, how good is, you are in does instrument. that <laughs> you know yeah. you, you, without it sounded like a wanker but you know music sort of like rubs out the mu music music puts you into the other dimension yeah. it's no the i agree completely. i think that's why we do it and, that's why yeah. we do it that's why we it's magic, you know. it, yeah it, it is magic funny. it's like it's, taking drugs it's the same thing it's, it makes you go all funny it gives you it, yeah. it, it, it puts you in a different 
you know, it puts you mentally somewhere else. And that's what that's what you're looking for, you know. It's, it's, it makes you believe that magic is possible. You know, I've music. had some of you know, the most wonderful experience in my life listening to music or seeing bands or, you know, they're just, just brilliant, isn't it? And it's never, it's never stopped. It's never stopped. I'm and still, I'm you know, still. And he doesn't, you know. And it Why are going to let me go? <laughs> I could have done so in my life. You know what's really sad? Look here. This, 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 my lonely, my lonely earplugs. This reminds me. These poor things, you know, it's my lonely, this unused it's like my passport oh. and my suitcase and they're just like <laughs> i can't wait to can't wait to use these motherfuckers again yeah no, i can't i just be i just be glad to well we, it, we're getting there now hopefully things will start yeah I, I feel like it i feel like it i think it's kind the of light at the end of the tunnel i know honestly there. Right, we'll wrap it up. Carvis, thank you so much, man. Thanks it's so that. nice to thank see you, you mate. Thank you so much. It's been really, it just feels like we've been hanging out, right? Yeah, man. It's all right. It's just, we'll be back in the pub soon. You, uh, that, you're damn right. We <laughs> <laughs> it's just, things will get back to normal. And But it's so nice to see you, man. Thank you so much. We'll be back in the pub, or as I call it, my front room with a load of tins, you know, <laughs> whatever it takes. I think we're going to be right. paying Norwegian prices for it, though, when we get back, though, I tell you. Oh, God, I imagine. God. We'll be, we'll be a tenner a pint. Well, it has depends how many pubs are left, though, doesn't it? I mean, a lot of it would be. Uh, who makes it? Who makes it? Let, let's let's makes not it? let's focus on the positive that um, yeah. things can get better. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start recording. Thanks so much, mate. I really appreciate it. Peace and love, brother. I really, really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you, Carlos. Cheers, mate. See you soon. <laughs>